In this lesson, we'll take a look at how lines and planes can intersect. And uh, the topic on this particular page is just to show you um, a picture of or uh, a diagram of what those three scenarios look like. And then in the examples in the following pages, we'll take a look at some algebraic. You're given the equation of a line, you're given the equation of a plane. How do they actually intersect? And how do you find the intersection points? So lines can, uh, can ex exist with a plane in one of three possible ways. So first of all, the line could come down here. And as long as the line is, is not parallel to the plane, it's going to intersect in a unique point somewhere. So this red point is meant to represent the, the single unique intersection point. So as long as that line is not parallel to the plane, it has to intersect the plane in one single point. It's possible that the line might lie on the plane. And so that means that every single point that's on the line is also on the plane. And so notice that if you had, uh, and we often deal with scalar equations of the planes, if you had, and this will come up in the examples, uh, if you had the uh, direction vector for the line, so let's say up here was the line's direction vector, and of course if, if you consider the normal vector for the plane, notice that in this scenario they would be perpendicular. And so if you find the direction vector of the line is perpendicular to the plane, then the line might, might lay on the plane. It might also be parallel and distinct from the plane. That's the third scenario. But one of those two would be uh, the, the scenario if the direction vector of the line is perpendicular to the plane, the plane's normal vector that it is. So the next one, the line might run parallel to the plane. And so this line... Um, again, its direction vector would be the, in the same direction, parallel to the plane, uh, and it would be its direction vector would be perpendicular to that normal vector. So that test only tells you that one of the two of these is the case. Um, and again, we'll get to that in the examples. So uh, in this scenario, there are no intersection points whatsoever. The line is always the same distance from the plane and never touches it at all. So you can have one solution to the, um, if you have a line with a plane, one point of intersection, you can have an infinite number or you can have none. So it's zero, one, or an infinite number. Now back to number two here for just a moment. Every point that's on the line is on the plane. You cannot turn that around and say that every point that's on the plane is also on the line. Because, for example, there's lots of points that are on the plane that are not on the line. So first example in the second page here says find the intersection of this plane with this line. And what we'll normally do here is find the parametric equations for the plane. But if you notice here, and this is the test to determine do I have perhaps a unique uh, solution, um, a, a, a single point where the line crosses through the plane, or do I have one of those scenarios where the line either lies on the plane or it's parallel to the plane. And the test for that is to take the direction vector for the line and the normal vector for the plane, the 2, negative 3, 1. So that's the direction vector for the line. And find the dot product of them. And so if you do that, uh, of course, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 6 times negative 3 is negative 18, plus negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. And that works out to be negative 16. Now, the fact that if that works out to be 0, then you have either the line lying on the plane or parallel to the plane because that would mean the direction vector for the line is perpendicular to the plane. It's a non-zero dot product, so this direction vector is not perpendicular to the normal, so that means that we have to have a unique point of intersection, just one point that the line's cutting through the plane. So any non-zero value here means there's a, there's a single point of intersection. So now we're going to, so that's what that means. There should be a unique point of intersection since the line and plane are not parallel. The, the dot product of these two vectors is not zero. So we're going to find the parametric equations for the line. So x would be 7 plus 3t, y would be 14 plus 6t, and z would be negative 9 minus 4t. And so what our goal now is to find what value of t would I substitute in here to give me a point on the line that's also on the plane. Now the part also on the plane, what we do is this. We take the equation of the plane in scalar form and we substitute 7 plus 3t in for x, 14 plus 6t in for y, and negative 9 minus 4t in for z. And so what that's going to do is give us an equation that just has just one variable, the t, and you see, 
So this is going to allow us to find the t value that is going to give us a point on the plane that's also a point in the line. So uh, we'll expand this out, just distribute, it, the, distribute the 2 in. 2 times 7 is 14. 2 times 3, t is 60. Multiply the negative 3 in. Uh, there's no multiplying in here at all. Just move, remove the brackets. And collect like terms. So uh, 6t minus 18t minus 4t is negative 6t. And if we combine together all the constants and bring them to the right side, we get 32. Dividing out the negative 16, we get negative 2. So negative 2 is the value that if I substitute in place a t will give me the unique point that's both on the line and the plane. So here again, again are the parametric equations. I'm substituting negative 2 in for t. And uh, 7 minus 6 is 1. 14 minus 12 is 2. And negative 9 plus 6 would be negative 1. Oh, sorry, not 6, 8. Negative 9 plus 8 would be negative 1. So those are the coordinates of this point. The line intersects the plane at the point 1, 2, negative 1. In example 2, same thing. We've got another uh, line, and we're trying to find where it intersects the plane. So we'll find the parametric equations for the line. x would be negative 3 plus 2t. Uh, y would be 1 plus 3t. And z would be 2 plus 7t. And so we take the equation of the plane up here, and we substitute these in place of x, y, and z. So remove the brackets, or expand the 4 in, or negative 2 in here. And those are the terms that you will get. Now combine the like terms, uh, 12t and 2t add to 14t, minus 14t is 0t. And negative 3 and 4, actually notice that the, four, uh, the 4s are opposite, so they add to 0. Same with the uh, 3 and negative 3. So we get 0t equals 0, which is kind of an interesting equation. It means <clears throat> what number do you multiply 0 by to get 0? And of course, there's no limit to the number of numbers you could use there. Any number you can think of, put in place a t, 0 times that number is always going to give you 0. doesn't matter whether this is an integer or a big number like, you know, 5 billion. 0 times 5 billion is still 0. Any number you can think of is a value that satisfies this. And so we say that t, the t is a member of the set of the entire set of real numbers. That's what the funny capital R means here. So what that means is that any number you want, you can put in place a t, and it gives you a point that's both on the line and the plane. And so <clears throat> there isn't just a single point of intersection here. There's an infinite number, which, of course, implies that the line lies on the plane. All points on the line are also on the plane. For example, if you want an example of a specific one, negative 3, 1, 2 is a point that's on the line, so it would also be on the plane. Example 3 here, again, got one more line and a plane. And if you haven't noticed, what I've done is these three examples cover all three of those scenarios. So um, the unique point of intersection and one where there's one point of intersection and then there's none. So we haven't done the none. So you might guess this is the, the no solution one here. So find the parametric equations for the line. And what I want to do is show you here what algebraically it looks like when you try to solve this to find the, the point or points that this uh, line intersects the plane. So writing out the parametric equations, uh, x would be negative 4 plus t, uh, y would be 6 plus 5t, <clears throat> and z would be negative 1 plus 0t, so z is just negative 1. And so we take the equation of the plane, and we substitute those parametric equations in for x, y, and z, and we solve. And so expanding the 5 in, and remove the brackets here so the signs change, uh, and this would be negative 2. And so notice that 5t minus 5t is no t, so we get 0t. But the constants don't add to 0. Negative 20 minus 6 minus 2 plus 7 doesn't add to 0. So what we actually, that actually ends up to negative 21 on the left, so it's positive 21 on the right. So we get 0t equals 21. And of course, uh, there is no number you multiply 0 by to get 21. And so there's no solution to that. So that implies that the line runs parallel and distinct from the plane. Distinct means that the line doesn't ever touch the plane and they share no common points.